Although filmmaking has evolved due to technology, creating great films means concentrating on some basic principles. Such principles include lighting, motion, sound, and so forth. In the same way, course design has evolved due to technology, but basic principles still apply to craft exceptional learning experiences. This brief presentation will provide you with five takes or areas of concentration to design for an online course, places where you can stop and consider your design mechanisms and decisions. The presentation is based on the article by Elizabeth St. Germain in 2011 titled Five Common Pitfalls of Online Course Design and is presented here by Ashford University Professor Lisa Marie Johnson. For online course design, the first take is to upload course materials then call it a day. We certainly don't want to do that. Instead, reading our course materials on a computer screen needs to be engaging. Inherently, just reading course materials on a screen does not make for a memorable learning experience. It's important to step back and take a fresh view at our content in the larger context of the World Wide Web. And it's important to think about how we can craft or revise materials to leverage web resources and technologies, everything from fonts to motion, as well as certain features. For example, with biological science courses, we might revise a handout on a tedious procedure and do a colorful animated slideshow. Or for a social science course, we might bring in a place's context to life through links to historic sites or a contemporary Google Street View. The point is to use our imagination to leverage the capabilities afforded by the web. Next, letting the learning management system drive our thinking. We don't want to do that either. Stop if you find yourself letting the learning management system drive your thinking, because they're usually pre-configured with a course template that instructors can populate with their course content. But these templates are often focused about the content that is related more to course administration than the educational and learning experience. Expanding the boundaries of the template invites us to open our mind to wider possibilities regarding content design. And the point is to start by thinking about the kinds of learning experiences we want to create rather than letting the system define the learning experience. Next, insisting on being the sage on the stage or even the sage on the page. We don't want to do that either. In the old model of education, instructors usually stood at a podium and served as the access point to knowledge and skills. But today, our students might search a topic and find multiple sources that update or improve upon your content. And the bottom line is, the web provides instantaneous access to an enormous volume of opinions, commentary, and scientific knowledge. And as a result, our role is now more of a content curator. We prune and train the branches extending from our expertise. And the web encourages the interdisciplinary links, associations, relationships, and openness among our students and the world. Our course success will depend on a by being a place where students can come to participate in a connection between the content and the outside world. It becomes a pivot point for learning more. The point is to focus on building bridges into your online course materials and become a facilitator of those possible connections. Next, expecting learners to consume knowledge and not create it. If you find yourself doing that in online course design, definitely take a moment to reconsider because we don't want to go there either. Too many online courses are focused on pouring content into learners as if they were containers. Where we succeed in supporting learners and making knowledge their own through practice, experience, and play matters. As St. Germain has noted, the interactivity and interconnectedness of computers provides increased opportunity for students to actively participate in their learning rather than passively consuming what you feed them. So developing content that asks students to recall and apply what they've learned is essential. But in an online course, this translates to enhancing our content with knowledge checks that ask students to generate knowledge such as data, capturing and uploading photos of evidence, researching connections to real-world conditions, or creating explanatory slideshows with video or animations. The point is to focus on letting students show what they know in interactive ways. Next, ignoring the way learners learn with and from each other. We certainly don't want to do that either. We want to embrace mistakes, ideas, and input. 
Because in online courses, we often create conditions for two-way dialogue between each student and the instructor. And courses sometimes avoid opportunities for learners to engage with one another and learn from each other's mistakes, ideas, and input. To overcome this, we might create wiki spaces or other spaces for groups of students to work together. Or we might, as St. Germain suggests, include assignments that require students to share ideas and resources, present topics to each other, and critique each other's work. The point is to use online communication tools and collaborative spaces to encourage class-wide support and learning. So what have we learned? We've learned a few things today about where you should stop and reconsider when you are designing an online course. You can use your imagination to leverage the capabilities afforded by the web. You can also think about the learning experiences rather than the learning management system. You can build bridges into your online course materials and become a facilitator of connections. And you can also support learner construction of knowledge through practice, experience, and play. And finally, you can develop an environment for class-wide support and learning. We hope you've enjoyed this brief presentation on five areas to stop and take a moment for consideration when you're designing an online course.